All right, you guys, Dayman Max 6, and we are back with Dr. Rand for a new segment of Ask the Doc. And we've been really good about putting out the video on time, <laughs> so I'm out, of, I'm out of material. So we're back in the doc's office, and we're going to get rolling right away with question number one, Doc. Uh, this guy says, I was a huge bodybuilder during my 20s, 30s, and early 40s. Uh, I've smartened up and been off for a few years. Is it possible to be somewhat close to the same look, but, not, but more monitored by, by Dr. Rand? Well, I guess what I'm trying to say is I want to go see the doc and get on hormone therapy, but not uh, not just to be normal in size, but to look somewhat close uh, the way uh, I was back in the day. Not Mr. Olympia size, but decent size. And my second question is, uh, is, it, <laughs> is it paid by credit card or does he take insurance? If insurance, which does he take? Cool question. Uh, all these questions end up being cool for some reason or another. Um, I don't know you say huge bodybuilder, meaning you've been huge before or a huge uh, fan or, you know, someone who worked out a lot. I don't know. Either way, it's it's good uh, for this particular gentleman because I found uh, the analogy I use is like a balloon. If you've blown up a balloon once, it's so much easier to blow it up again the second time, right? So uh, I know he doesn't want to become, uh, you know, gigantic necessarily again but if you have been let's say you know 250 pounds at six foot let's say and now you're sitting at uh you know 185 well then yeah it's a heck of a lot easier to get to two really even 250 pounds again if you've been there before but certainly you know a lot easier to get to 225 and i don't know if these numbers fit into his you know numbers but um the answer to the question is a resounding yes you can always I find get back to where you've been before and it doesn't have to include steroids it's just a matter of you know the same things that always count you have to eat right sleep right and train right uh, again with steroids uh, you can go supra physiologic and you can leverage all those three things that we need to do properly anyway but mm -hmm. yeah you see plenty of guys out there man you just go into gold's gym and you see guys that aren't has-beens I don't mean it that way at all but they've you know they've gone through their day and he says you know smart smartened up I assume he means hey you're not trying to be a champion. Uh, I don't mean to say that either. We always want to be a champion, but you don't want to hold champion status, be the number one uh, or the number one contender for a number of years. That doesn't play out well. We found that over the years. I mean, look at all the people who have tried to stay in the Olympics and are dead. Plus you know, point. versus the guys that come in, you give your best shot and get out. So if you mean smart by that, then yeah, definitely you smarten up in a good way. But yeah, we can always uh, uh, maintain you know, uh, uh, an above average muscle mass. And I, that's not a loaded statement either. And you look around average isn't all that great, but yeah, I mean, I, I hope that answers the question as far as the other one goes. <laughs> no, we don't deal with insurance. It's a total rip off the insurance game, as you know, and hopefully the whole system will fall apart and we get some real medicine going out there. But, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, we can, um, what we do here is we give, uh, uh it's called a super bill, a CMS 1500, to the patient, they can beat up their insurance company and get whatever they can out of it. I'm sorry, it's just, um, I can't spend the time that I need to spend with people, you know, the three to five minutes they spend in HMOs and cutting the mustard. Uh, so uh, they, they don't reimburse that much at all anyway. Certainly I couldn't make a living that way, so I apologize for that, but um, I'm happy to keep answering questions, you know, the way we're doing it here for as long <laughs> as possible. I'm sure you appreciate it. Thanks, Doc. Okay, an older gentleman. <laughs> I know what you're going to say next. You better <laughs> not. Yeah, you, better, you better watch the age I'm a 50-year-old male <laughs> down about 30 pounds with another 40 to go to get to a healthy BMI. My endo has me on 600 milligrams of test cipionate per week and uh, an astrozole to maintain muscle mass. He doesn't mention how much an astrozole or uh, to maintain muscle mass. It has worked wonderfully. Uh, wonderfully. Recently, I've hit a plateau. My question is, is the body weight set point related only to body fat or is it total body weight, muscle, and fat? More specifically, if I increase muscle mass using anabolics, will fat decrease proportionally to maintain body weight set point? 
If you have any tips on fat loss and super, uh, super uh, physiological dose of testosterone, please throw them in. Thanks, Dr. Dave, uh, for this resource. Uh, you seem to be the sole provider of scientifically sound information on topic related to steroid use. I, you know, I wish I could give, uh, I, I definitely want to give a great answer here. i just not sure I have enough information. Obviously, it sounds like this gentleman has lost a great deal of fat. Mm -hmm. And still has more to go. There may be some muscle loss with that, but you know, that's, yeah, and, and that's a, that's a, yeah, a, a lot of mass, whether it's muscle or fat to lose all at once. Um, and I know it wasn't all at once, but you know, fairly quickly it sounds like, um, is there a set point is one of his questions. Yes, there is in the sense that, you know, we're born with a certain number of cells, uh, fat cells. And, uh, you know, the current theory now is that you're not really getting rid of fat cells so much as you're shrinking them. Right. right? So just like people can tend toward, you know, being an endomorph or an ectomorph or a mesomorph, uh, you have a window within which you can work, but you're only going to get to the edges one way or the other. You're not going to, you're not going to climb outside that window. You know, an endomorph is never going to look like an ectomorph. I mean, you're, you know, you got certain cards you got to play and you're dealt. Um, that having been said, you know, for what most people want, no, there are no limits. I mean, you know, again, you're not going to, you're not going to look like a string bean if you're an endomorph, but you can get rid of your fat and be, you know, a nice, healthy, I mean, super healthy 8% body fat. So, um, on the one hand, I want to be realistic, but on the other, I, I definitely want to be totally motivational and, and optimistic. I mean, there, there, you know, there are no excuses, I guess, is, is uh, the bad news. The good news is you can get whatever you want, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, some, in some ways, it might be more difficult, certainly, to lose fat if you're a natural endomorph. And it's just a body type where you tend to be, you know, endomorphs are the guys that tend to be, you know, big boned, as they say, and have a more difficult time losing fat, but can put on muscle just like a mesomorph, you know, ectomorph's the opposite end of the spectrum where he's naturally very, very thin. It's all you can do to put on, you know, any muscle. He misses immediately, drops, this is me, by the way, you know, <laughs> drops five pounds and uh, can generally stay pretty lean no matter what he does or eats. Uh, so I would stay definitely positive. And, uh, you know, we did talk about uh, earlier in this uh, discussion a bit about, you know, set points when it comes to uh, testosterone levels, but really when it comes to, you know, body weight, if you've been there before, mm -hmm. we talked about that earlier, you know, mm -hmm. if you've already been to a certain level of, of muscle mass, you can get there much easier. It's been my experience. I'm not sure if we have any studies on this, but I mean, I have no doubt or I wouldn't be opening up my mouth about mm -hmm. it. But um, if he has been thinner before, which naturally he has, then he should be able to get there. And of course, you know, what he's doing through an endocrinologist, which is great, uh, you know, the, the, um, the dose of 600 milligrams per milliliter of testosterone cypine, as we mentioned earlier, is probably max dose per the studies mm -hmm. before which you start having things go south on you, no matter what you do. And you're actually, though, you know, bigger, stronger, faster, healthier with that dose. Again, I, I, I'm surprised because I don't see that adopted, you know, by really anybody that I know of. I mean, that's the first I've heard of an endocrinologist. Uh, prescribing that amount, even though we do have some of those rare studies, like I said, I just never thought it was going to be adopted by, you know, certainly not the AMA in my lifetime anyway. Uh, so it's great to see that that's happening. One thing you might want to be careful of and look out for is uh, with a dose like that, make sure you're covering your estrogen a lot. Again, you, you, you've got to be super saturating the, the, um, the androgen receptors. Um, so make sure that that extra testosterone is not floating around and helping you promote fat gain by having elevated levels of estrogen uh that would be you know yeah he says he's on an estrogen so you just gotta make sure he's but what dose quite amount. yeah yeah, yeah. Quite i mean amount. that's that's a lot to cover and you might have to switch to again who knows i've seen people i've seen patients with one cc a week it's not often one cc a week of testosterone cipia they need letrozole because you know sometimes they're for example i i i haven't developed a rapport enough or they just don't care what I have to say about, you know, maybe drinking too much because that can raise your levels of aromatase or, um, again, just genetics, mm -hmm. you know, maybe they're just, they have a lot of aromatase and they make a lot of estrogen. Yeah. So, um, that you got to make sure it's covered. Uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily go above that dose. I mean, we talk about this stuff in our videos all the time. You get to a certain point where testosterone may not be the best answer. Mm -hmm. uh, I would suggest you talk to his endocrinologist about uh, ways to improve deposition of muscle mass by maybe backing down on the testosterone 
and going to an anabolic and say, hey, what do you think about, you know, maybe cutting out, uh, you know, half that testosterone, but, you know, let's get something which is going to really leverage that muscle mass, some, some, uh, some oxandrolone, like yeah. we talked about earlier, you know, yeah. maybe uh, 20 milligrams a day of that and see yeah. if that doesn't make a big difference, especially since he's hit a plateau. And assuming, of That's course, right. that he's doing all the right things, which, come on, man, if you drop 40 pounds of fat, uh, you've got to be doing something right. So he's probably eating right, sleeping right, and training. But the problem is that when you have that much weight to lose also, you know, like I do, that the first few pounds will come off much easier. Sure. After a while, it's just the body doesn't want to let go anymore. You know, it stagnates. So, yeah. Well, that's that's pretty much uh, yeah. the cost of victory or, or what happens, you know, in a nutshell. I mean, it's that yeah. last 5%, 1% that makes the difference between the champs and not, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, but to your point, yeah, I mean, you're going to see a lot in the beginning. But you know what? Also, though, what I've seen, particularly with weight loss, if it comes the, the what I would consider the right way with muscle gain, you get a snowball effect because why? You're putting on muscle mass, which is synonymous with metabolism, right? Mm -hmm. So um, you get you get some headway going, and you go, wow! Now you know, and you start to really see it start to drop off at the end. Now again, that last percentage where all of a sudden you can start seeing you know abdominal muscles yeah. and cross striations, maybe even yeah. you know uh, that part is. You know, that's why you don't see a whole lot of it. It's, yeah. It ain't easy to get to that point because yeah. it's not natural for the body, I think is the main reason. Yeah. But just to get to a healthy, like we said, you know, 8 to 12%, yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. you should definitely be able to get there. Yeah. Um, so we answered the question, the part about yeah. uh, what to do with super physiologic dosage. Watch your estrogen and maybe consider, you know, an alternative through his endocrinologist. And uh, no, there's, you know... No excuses, man. You can definitely get there. I guess <laughs> There's is no, the take home. Yeah, There's no you're not limit. stuck. Yeah, <laughs> you, can, you can get all. You can make it all the way. That's awesome. Thanks, man.